The 20th century was a whirlwind of discovery. And the 21st century is already shaping up as a time of far greater innovation and discovery. In fact, it has been so revolutionary that some Bible scholars see it as a fulfillment of Bible prophecy. I mean when I say that the beginning of the 21st century is seen by some scholars as a fulfillment of Bible prophecy. Let's stop for a moment and go back in time to the days of Daniel the prophet who lived more than 2,400 years ago. During his lifetime, God repeatedly gave him visions of the future of our planet. These visions spelled out the world's history from Daniel's day right down to the close of time. They are literally a detailed timeline between Daniel's time and the day that Jesus comes back for us. To date, not one detail in any of Daniel's prophecies has been wrong. And since most of what he predicted has already happened, millions of people have come to trust what Daniel says about our future. What do Daniel's prophecies have to do with the inventions of the 21st century? Quite a lot, some people think. There's an interesting verse near the end of the book that has arrested the attention of many Bible scholars in recent years. Daniel chapter 12 and verse 4 tells us, But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. If you read the book of Daniel closely, you'll find all through it, and in the ninth chapter in particular, an intense desire on Daniel's part to understand the things he is seeing and hearing. Then at the end of the book, the angel tells Daniel to shut up the words and seal the book. I believe that the prophecy of Daniel chapter 12 and verse 4 is being fulfilled in this day and age. Bible knowledge and the study of Bible prophecy have metaphorically exploded. And while few people realize it, we might have a little girl who once lived in this house behind me to thank, at least in part. Beginning in the early 1800s, the light of God's word swept across the planet like a wildfire. One topic of particular interest to many Bible students was Bible prophecy the time had come to understand what Daniel had written. But in order for people to understand Daniel and the rest of the Bible, they had to have a Bible in their hands, and very few people did. In fact, at the close of the Dark Ages, the Bible was only available in a total of 67 out of an estimated 7,000 world languages. In other words, the Bible was available to less than 1% of the language groups on earth. To make matters worse, 
even if the Bible was available in your language. Chances were it was too expensive to buy one for yourself. But that was all about to change. And God used a faithful little girl born in this home in the Welsh countryside in 1784 to make the Bible available to the entire world. More than anything in the world, Mary Jones wanted to learn how to read. Why? So she could read the Bible for herself. Like most other people, she only had access to the Bible when she heard it read at church or prayer meeting. She wanted more. She wanted to read it herself. But there were no schools nearby to teach her how to read. Finally, when Mary was 10 years old, she was able to start attending school. But it was an hour's walking distance from her home. Life was very, very poor, um, especially so for the Jones family because uh, Mary's father died when she was four years old and she was raised by her widowed mother, uh, which meant that her mother had to go out to work in different farms. Materially, they were very, very poor, but spiritually, they were very, very rich. She quickly rose to the top of her class, but learning to read was only half of Mary's dream. She still didn't have a Bible of her own. A kind neighbor with a Bible in Welsh allowed her to come over every weekend and spend time reading. She lived two miles from Mary's house. Mary visited every weekend and was amazed as she read the stories of Jesus. She'd heard some of them in church, but how much better for her to read it for herself. The Bible came alive for her, and her weekend visits soon were not enough. In fact, each hour spent in her neighbor's Bible only fueled the fire in little Mary's heart to own a Bible of her own in the Welsh language. So even though they were prohibitively expensive, she began to save her pennies. Mary did odd jobs around the village for meagre amounts of money, a penny here and there. She began sewing for people, raising chickens, selling their eggs, gathering firewood, helping local mothers with their chores and watching over their children in order to save money for her Bible. For six long years, Mary saved her pennies. It wasn't easy. Some of Mary's Bible money had to go toward feeding the family. Owning a Bible seemed like an impossible dream. But after six years, she finally had enough money to purchase a Bible of her own. This is the monument, inspired by Mary's patience and determination to buy her own Welsh Bible. But initially, Mary's quest only introduced a new problem. Where would she get a Bible in the Welsh language? No one in her village had one for sale. In fact, hardly anyone had one at all. Welsh Bibles were exceptionally scarce. Then Mary discovered that her new school teacher had one. She asked him where he got it. He told her of a minister by the name of Thomas Charles in the village of Bala, 25 miles away, who had Welsh Bibles for sale. One can only begin to imagine Mary's excitement. Even though she was only 15 years old, she set out on foot and walked all day over very rough terrain to get to the town of Bala. It was a trip that would be immortalized in history. And at least in part, 
I believe it was also a fulfillment of Bible prophecy. When Mary arrived here in Bala late in the evening, she knocked on the door of the local minister who took her in for the night. In the morning, he took her to see Pastor Charles, who once lived right here in this very building. Thomas Charles welcomed Mary and listened patiently as she told her story. I love the Bible, she said. I've loved it ever since I was a little girl and heard it being read at a meeting I attended with my father and mother. Then the school opened when I was 10 and I learned to read. Now I want a Bible of my own. Pastor Charles could hardly believe his ears. And you have come 25 miles on foot to buy one? He asked. Yes, she said. And I have the money to pay for it right here. How in the world did you get the money for a Bible? You said that your parents were weavers. And I don't suppose they're very rich. Oh, she said. I've worked and saved for six years, sir. I did mending for neighbors. I gathered firewood, raised ducks and chickens just about everything you can think of. And now, finally, I have enough. The money jingled softly in the little purse, clutched tightly in her hands. Thomas Charles looked over at the other pastor and said, Mr. Edwards, isn't this sad? To see a young girl so brave, so intelligent, and so consistent a Christian coming all this long 25 miles for a Bible, and I have none to spare, not even one. There's no hope of getting one either, as the Religious Tract Society has refused to print more for Wales. Do you mean to say that we don't even have one for this poor girl? The pastor asked. Not even one, he said. There are two or three Bibles here that have already been promised to other people, but I have no more. The words fell like hammer blows on Mary's ears. She was devastated and she began to weep uncontrollably because she would be going home without a Bible after so many years of waiting. The chair shook under her sobs. Thomas Charles was suddenly moved with compassion. He got up out of his chair and laid his hand on Mary's head. Mary, he said, you will have a Bible no matter what. One of these Welsh Bibles was going to a man who can also read English. So I will let him have an English Bible and you can have the Welsh Bible that was intended for him. He went to the bookcase and got a Welsh Bible for Mary. So that day, an excited teenage girl walked 25 miles home to begin reading her very own Bible. After she left, Thomas Charles started to dream. Mary's story had so deeply touched him that he went to a meeting of the Religious Tract Society in 1802 and told them what had happened. 
When he was finished, he asked the members to consider forming a new society dedicated to printing and distributing Bibles in the Welsh language. During the discussion, Thomas Charles continued to plea for the establishment of a society to supply Bibles to Wales. In the midst of the excitement, a minister by the name of Joseph Hughes declared, surely a society could be formed for this purpose. But if for Wales, why not for the kingdom? Why not for the world? That December day, the British and Foreign Bible Society was born. The society held its first meeting on March 7, 1804, and 700 pound was raised to begin the printing and distribution of Bibles all around the world. In God's version of history, it was a profound moment. The Great Awakening had its catalyst, and the way was open for millions of Christians to understand the wonderful prophecies of the Bible. The moment had come for knowledge to increase. A little girl with unshakable faith paved the way for the whole world to read what Daniel wrote. The Bible was all important to Mary Jones. She read over it four times during her lifetime. After that, she memorized the Bible. When she got to an old lady, she, she was blind, so she remembered those verses, and she lived those verses. And when she died, that Bible was by her side on the table. So it was more important to her than anything else she had during her whole life. I'm at the National Library of Wales in Aberystwyth. This is the home of the Mary Jones Bible. Now remember, when Mary made her famous walk to Bala in 1800 to purchase her Welsh Bible, the Bible itself was only available in 67 languages. By the year 1900, it was available in 524 languages, and the British and Foreign Bible Society had distributed almost 204 million copies. And what's even more amazing, between 1815 and today, a total of over 6 billion Bibles and scriptures have already been distributed. This is it. I can hardly believe that I'm actually holding the Mary Jones Bible, the one she once held and read. What a thrill this is. What an honor and privilege. Now, Mary could never have dreamed that she would play such an important role in God's plans for planet Earth. She was a simple country girl, used by God to put the Bible and the story of Jesus into the hands of millions of people. If God could use a humble country girl to start the fulfillment of a 2,500-year-old prophecy, I wonder what he might be waiting to do with you. The work of spreading the message of this book is not finished yet. There are still 4,400 dialects and language groups that are still waiting for a Bible of their own. God is waiting for more people like Mary to step out in simple faith and devote themselves to Him. He's waiting for you. Just imagine what could happen. Maybe you've never read or studied the Bible, or maybe you haven't been studying it like you should. Maybe you've never had a chance to see what a little Welsh girl found in her Bible more than 200 years ago. Please join me now as we pray that through the pages of the Bible, you too will discover what God has planned for you. Father in heaven, today we've been touched by the story of a little girl 
a little girl you used to bring good news to a dying world. Today, we want to meet the same Jesus she met in the Bible, and we want you to work in our lives like you worked in hers. We sense that Jesus is coming soon, and we want to be a part of your plans. Take our lives just as they are. Forgive our sins and use us, we pray, to reach a lost world for Jesus. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. If you've been inspired by this week's program from Wales, be sure to join us again next week. When it is written, we'll bring you another totally new and thought-provoking perspective on the peace, insight, understanding and hope that only the Bible can give us. It is written truly is television that changes lives. Until next week, remember, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God.